Hello everyone, this is Mr Cooper and I thought we'd have some reading and relaxation time and I'm going to read you one of my favourite stories, The Emperor's New Clothes. Once there was an emperor who was always changing his clothes. He had a different outfit for every hour of the day. Whenever his ministers wanted him for something special, they always went to the royal clothes closet first. He was more likely to be there deciding what to change into next than passing laws in his council chamber or balancing the budget in his counting house. One day, two men arrived in town. They knew how fond the emperor was of new clothes and they hatched a plan, a crafty plan. They spread the news that they could weave the most beautiful cloth anyone had ever seen and furthermore it was magic and invisible to anyone who was stupid or unworthy of the position they held. I must have an outfit made from that marvellous new cloth everyone is talking about, said the emperor, and he sent for the weavers. They agreed to weave some of the cloth for him and went away from the palace carrying silk and golden thread as well as a large sum of money. They hid the silk and golden thread in their packs and then set up their loom. A loom was a great big weaving machine in the old days. There was the steady clack clack and the whir of a busy loom for days. The emperor was very anxious to see how the new cloth was coming along, but he was just a tiny bit afraid. What would I do if I could not see the cloth, he thought. And though he didn't think for a moment that he wasn't fit to be emperor, he sent his faithful old prime minister to look at the cloth in his place. The weavers led the prime minister to their loom. He could not see a single thread. Oh dear, he thought, if the emperor finds out I can't see the cloth, I will lose my job. I must pretend I can see it. Well, it, it's the most be uh, beautiful piece of cloth in, in the world, he told the emperor on his return to the palace. The emperor decided perhaps he would go and see it for himself after all. He gathered his favourite counsellors around him and went to the weavers. Show us our beautiful new cloth, he said. Can you not see it? It's there, on the loom, said the weavers. Oh, so it is, so it is, said the emperor, his voice full of admiration and his heart full of shame, because he could not see the cloth either. But then neither could anyone else, though everyone thought everyone else could see it. There were so many exclamations of delight at the beauty of the new cloth, it really was quite astonishing in the circumstances. Oh, make me a suit of clothes from the cloth and I will wear it in the procession tomorrow, said the emperor, outwardly smiling and inwardly trembling. The two weavers said they were tailors too and that they would make the suit themselves. At eight o'clock next morning, it was ready, or so they told the emperor. The emperor bathed, he powdered his hair, he put on his shoes and stockings, and then he let the weavers dress him in the new suit of clothes. Oh, it's a perfect fit, they said. Oh, it's a perfect fit, said all the councillors. It's a perfect fit said the emperor, although he could see nothing but his own pink skin. When the emperor was ready, or thought he was, the procession through the streets of the town began. Everyone knew about the wonderful cloth. Everyone knew that only those worthy enough could see it, and that to everyone else it was invisible. Oh, look at the emperor's new suit, isn't it? Beautiful, sighed the people in the crowd as he walked proudly by. Oh, how well it fits. 
Oh, truly a suit fit for an emperor. And then a little voice rang out above the others. It belonged to a boy who never listened to gossip, and he hadn't heard the stories about the wonderful cloth. Besides, his father had taught him always to be truthful. <laughs> the emperor has no clothes on, he shouted. Oh, oh, someone began to laugh. The boy is right. The emperor has no clothes on. The cry was caught up by the people in the crowd. Oh, the emperor. Oh, he has no clothes on. He's got no clothes on. Oh, he's got no clothes on. <laughs> the poor emperor was shivering with cold, so he knew the crowd must be right. But he walked proudly through the streets and back to the palace with his head held high and his skin blushing a bright and glowing pink. He sent guards to fetch the weavers so that they could be punished for daring to trick an emperor, but they had vanished and were never seen again. And from that day onwards, I'm glad to say, the emperor paid a little less attention to what he wore and more attention to the affairs of state. I hope you've enjoyed that. And I hope you've had a nice, relaxing time while you've listened to it. See you soon. Bye.